Hello, welcome to this week's episode of The Relation Skippers, which is all about guys getting wise. Across from me at the other microphone is Craig. Morning, Craig. Good morning. How are you today? I'm... On this nice sunny day in Sarasota, Florida is where we are currently based. But we're worldwide on the podcasting network of... I don't know. I'm making it up. Um, Relationskippers.com, though, you can go there and always find us. Right? Go and listen to some stuff. Exactly. I encourage you to do that. I will. I will try to listen to us occasionally. Uh, today <laughs> is number... On our the book that was just finished and coming out any day now. We're in June 2019. Get the F out of my life. What's the book called again, Craig? Get the F out of my life. And the F, you have to read the book to know what that means. Even though it does mean what you think it means, but it also means something else. And you have eight chapters in the book, and we've been doing uh, a podcast per chapter. We are going on chapter seven today, Appreciate. And that is about gratitude is the secret sauce to getting happier. Does that mean I have to think about someone other than my poor, sad, sorry self going through a breakup? Correct. Oh, my God. How am I going to do that, Craig? Well, it's going to take a while because at first you do have to focus on yourself. You know, you do have to. And we went through the chapters of extricate, meaning get the person 100% emotionally out of your life, physically if possible as well. Contemplate means think about it, journal about it. That is working on yourself, right? Recuperate, reaching out to others for help, like counselors or life coaches or friends or so on. Uh, collaborate is having fun with others and good times with others. Participate, a brand new hobby you've never done before to help rewire the brain. Rejuvenate, that is getting healthy, you know, physically healthier, eating better, sleeping better, etc. And now, hopefully this is a little further down the line, you can focus on making yourself think about the things you're grateful for in life. As it's getting better, hopefully, but you may have to do it even if you don't feel like it. I think where you're driving with this idea is the uh, concept of the person giving a gift often drives greater pleasure from that than the person who receives a gift. Correct, because the payoff for you is you will get happier. And there's actually a lot of research to indicate that that's true as well. And it's also... I sort of think of it as a vaccination against cynicism because if you've gone through a bad, bitter breakup and it's taken you a while to get over it, you may come to the conclusion that all women are whatever or most women are whatever. And what that ends up doing to your brain is it sets it in there that, first of all, I will never find somebody, but also that's a con- that you have a contemptuous view of women then and contempt is a recipe for unhappiness i didn't quite know where you were going with this appreciate mm-hmm. concept mm-hmm. when we first started talking about it and now it's become very clear to me <clears throat> that if you've gone through a bad breakup if I've gone through a bad breakup, yes. as uh, as I have, yeah. one always thinks this is the worst breakup in history. Well, correct, because it's you and you're going through it, yeah. And it's it, it's a fine line between wallowing in that self-pity and using the words that... <laughs> it makes me laugh because whenever I... And I know you're using them as in an exemplary form. The words never and <laughs> always yes. and all uh, are tells. always bad. Right. <laughs> they're, right? They're, yes. I, I they're see never you, good. I see what you did there. Yes. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Be- yeah. Because of that fact is because you think, oh, all women are bad. All well, women are. Yeah. And in this particular position, if you've been through a breakup or mm-hmm. divorce in particular, you, you, it would be so easy to get to that point and say, oh, I'm just giving up. Mm-hmm. I am never, keyword, yeah. going to do this ever again. Yeah. And... Uh, Yes, maybe men, there's a whole movement, men going their own way, right? And that is, I believe that is too cynical of a movement. 
because there are good women out there. You got to find them. You got to look for them. And that, that's the next chapter. Actually, the final chapter of the book is when you start dating again, what to look for and how to find this nice person. But, um, but the other thing to do is even if you don't think you're going to um, date again, either for a while or maybe even ever, by doing these steps, including the appreciate step, the bringing gratitude into your life, uh, it gives you the option to meet someone because, first of all, people don't want to be around somebody who's negative all the time, right? I mean, that's just human nature. Um, now, I do make a distinction for it's okay to be skeptical for a while. And skeptical means that you are kind of, you want to make sure something is trustworthy before you uh, believe in it, Right. That's being skeptical or, or make, make sure it adds up, make sure it makes sense. And it's a good thing. But cynicism is all women are, you know, and I will never. Yeah. Uh, an element of the putting the appreciation part of this together in your life is also I think everybody's going to reflect back on the relationship and hopefully ask the question, well, two questions. What went wrong? Mm -hmm. And what part did I play in that? Yes. Well, that was a definite step. You do have to look at what you did that caused the issues. You know. And part of that might be, and I think this happens a lot, is that need to be more appreciative of, say, the person you choose, but also to be appreciative of, kind of, of life in general, I think, too. Yes. That's, in fact, that's a good place to start because you may not want to be appreciative of the person you broke up with right. at the moment at you the know, moment yeah. uh, maybe down the line but you can be appreciative of the friends who stuck by you the um if you've done some counseling and it's going well or found a life coach that helps move you forward you can be appreciative of that you can even and i and i write some suggestions of you, you can even well first of all one of our ahoys is to create a gratitude journal, you know, and that's, I use a one called five minute journal and it's an app every morning. It reminds me to, uh, what were you grateful for either the previous day or you can do it at night about that day. And so you can start with small stuff. I appreciate the smile of the barista this morning or whatever. See, that's okay. It doesn't have to be some big giant thing to start the practice of gratitude. And the reason is it keeps you from getting cynical. And it, and it actually adds bubbles of light and bubbles of joy back into your life. And we're trying to reverse the effects of a bad breakup, right? The and cliche is that which doesn't break me makes me better. Yeah, yeah. But if you take control and look at the, the good, some good side of things. And I don't like that cliche because I think it's too big a picture. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's much better to say there will be weird things, there'll be good things, there'll be odd things, there'll be educational things. Breaking up with somebody is more than likely going to be a part of everyone, keywords, yeah. life at some right. point, more than likely. Right. So to learn to be able to see through what we think of as bad things that lead to possibly good things, especially if you follow the suggestions in your book, you never know where these things lead hopefully for good and the appreciation also is kind of a loop back to the original part of the relationship i think where you can then kind of i think maybe for guys this is more important than women is to kind of categorize stuff which mm -hmm. is what i do in relationships and say mm -hmm. wow you know i really dug this about her and her and her and this is maybe where i went wrong mm -hmm. and therefore maybe i can learn to appreciate the good things and not do that next time. I know it's a different topic, but all yeah, these but that's worth doing. Out. What you just said too. Look back on the things you maybe did appreciate that you did like about the person that you broke up with. So you can look for that in the next person too. It's you may be looking for different things next time, but uh, the appreciate step is about, and you, and this is a do it anyway thing again because you may not feel like it, but you are looking at the light around you because it's a little bit dark right now, right? If uh, if it's been a tough breakup. Um, Just while I think of it too, but it might well be, let's say, let's use me as an example. Let's say I've broken up with a girlfriend or a, 
a spouse, it's possible that it's mostly been my fault. And I may not want to look back at what a poor uh, person I have been in a relationship. So it's, would it be easy to put blinkers on and, and just ignore the entire bad part about me? <laughs> of course. It? And and by the way, that is okay for a while because you want to, don't want to beat up on yourself too much. Right. But this the appreciate step can be forward looking. You can't you, you don't have to decide to look back and beat yourself up or try to find something positive about the past. The, remember, we're trying to rewire the brain to see good stuff uh, because you've been feeling bad stuff. So um, so by journaling, which forces you to do it. Um, and again, this is the like the one I use the five minute. You're literally done in five minutes. So it's not a big investment of time, but little sparks of these like you were talking about you like little bite size ideas as opposed to grand ideas that nobody can really pull off right so um so this one this app asks you three questions like what what do you uh what do you appreciate about today or what do you feel grateful about today okay you've got to actually go into your mind that may be feeling negative and find something positive yeah to write down and like I say, it can be as small as I appreciated the smile of the barista or who remembered my name or whatever it is, you know, that uh, and those are positive things because uh, what they're finding out in the research is that it's very gratitude is very important for building and maintaining social relationships is what they're finding. And they've done all kinds of experiments to find that that we need to be grateful for it, not just assume it comes to us. You know, when people just assume everything should be good <laughs> and it's not, then that's how you become cynical. Oh, yeah, you will be, always be disappointed in because that. Because of expectation somewhat, right? How could this happen to me? Well, it did happen to you. So now maybe you need to reorient to look into the things you do appreciate. Because remember, we're building toward a place of, first of all, maintaining current social relationships, friends, family, and people are like being around grateful people because they make them feel good about themselves, right? So There's uh, a question of scale here too, which in which something like a small thing, like let's say my, I'm grateful, say this morning, for a really nice cup of coffee that I had. Yes. And it was great. There is an odd way in our minds, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that acknowledging a small item or act or thing for which I'm grateful actually outbalances or balances a whole lot of bad stuff in my mind. So a small gratitude has an enormous amount of power, way more power than you would think it would have to overcome even the cynicism about a past relationship. Yes. It is an odd Kind of a juxtaposition of those two. I hope I've made that clear what I'm trying you to say. You have. And, and in fact, see, that's a good way to start. In other words, if, yeah. you, if you're even having a hard time being grateful of people, like I say, the barista, but you could start with the coffee itself. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? The idea is, wow, I so enjoy this. You see how you create that moment of the bubble of light or of a good or of a joyful thing, just even for a moment, Right. So we're doing little bites to reverse depression, all these other things that you may be feeling if you've gone into a bit of a, a black air space, you know, after a breakup. It's it, another interesting distinction you made there was things versus people. Yeah. Because if you really are in that black funk about everyone. Yeah, yeah everyone is <laughs> All shit, the time. Right? All, the, all, the all time. people are selfish. All the time. By the way, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't mean you can't find good people and have a good thing. So yeah. let's think of it. So let's say I'm grateful for air conditioning. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, that's the way to find your way to start being grateful. Yeah. And because I think what's going to happen is some people think, oh, I've got, what, do you want me to just turn into this sunny uh, person? No, that's not what we're saying. Gratitude is an exercise as much as it is a feeling. In other words, you start with an exercise of gratitude. And uh, um, 
Yeah. Oh, all ahead. gratitude, I'm just trying to kind of condense that out. All gratitude works in opposition to whatever the opposite of ingratitude. Yeah, right, right. And, and in a disproportionate amount. Anyway, right. I just wanted to... Yeah. No, that's true, see. Um, and there's... Uh, I write in the book about John Gottman. He's a relationship researcher, and he says the four horsemen of the relationship apocalypse are criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling. And the worst is contempt. In other words, when a person reaches a point of contempt in a relationship, it won't survive the relationship. But if you break up and get cynical, you have contempt for women in general. The antidote to contempt is gratitude. I mean, that's your doorway in that you can start small just like you're saying, if it's people are bugging you right now, then just be grateful for things at first. But do move to people after a while. In fact, one of my suggestions in the book is take three friends, family members, or somebody you know that has helped you in some way in the last year and write them an actual letter of gratitude and send it. Yeah, that's always a good idea. Right? Because, yeah, the act of writing it is also good. But go ahead and send that. And uh, now that's pushing a little further than just doing a gratitude journal for your, to yourself. But that's, and that's an, a further step down that you can do that starts to pull you back into maintaining social relationships. And, um, and the final step in that would be sending a, a letter of gratitude to your ex. Well, you know what? Believe it or not, <laughs> that's true. And if you, yeah, like I'm grateful you're out of my life. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you can write that letter to, and not send that one. But did you know that there, there's research that's to indicate true. that, and, and this was done through uh, people prayed for the other person, and they found that, that they had a personal benefit for that, that it, that it upped their level of gratitude in general is if they're actually praying. Now, remember, you do have to get into a different mindset to be praying for the person that hurt you, but, uh, or you could meditate on it or write about it or what, if you're not a person of faith, but um, it's, the point is, uh, this is another one of these things of, you may have to do it before you feel it. Um the big benefit of doing that kind of activity and, and mm -hmm. all of the activities we're talking about today is it dilutes any resentment. Yeah. And resentment, Actually, that will start right. Yeah. Resentment and contempt, they're not different sides of the they same coin. They don't help point. you. Right. None of the, the don't, they just don't help you. They're natural human reactions. Yes. And resentment in particular can be long-lasting and has residual effect in, in the brain and now the way we view things. But gratitude is the light that shines on the resentment. And by the way, the reason that chapter one is so important, extricate, get the person 100% emotionally out of your life, then you can, it's easier to work toward the gratitude portion. If you're still yo-yoing and constantly in contact with this person that makes you feel bad, you know, either by being angry at each other or or if the person had an affair on you or rejected you somehow, you're just constantly feeling bad. So it is hard to get to the gratitude step if you're doing that. So it is important to get distance on that and then but make sure and and, uh, you know, force yourself to do the gratitude step. Um there's a University of California at Berkeley's Greater Good Science Center. If you look that up online, and it shows you specific steps on how to do a gratitude journal. And that's in the book, too. So if somebody gets it, you can click on the link if it's a Kindle. Um, you could do a meditation or a prayer of gratitude. And uh, you can meditate on that if you're a person who meditates. Or if you're a person of faith, then maybe write your own prayer of gratitude you know, for people or for whatever you want to do and do it ritualistically, the same way you do a meditation, you know. Uh, it's not the size of the gratitude as much as it is the routine of doing it because we're, we're trying to reverse the negative effects of the breakup. So you have to add in positive 
effects that you yourself have made happen because we're men, we're action oriented. So we're going to make this happen. I also like the way the appreciators, the, the point at which you believe this is a good idea for guys for a break up because it means that you, you've got to have some perspective yeah. on the whole deal. It takes deal. a while to get there. Right. At yeah. t- time was the other question. Right. But time and perspective will only allow you to get to that point. But it's also reinforcing in the sense of if you get to the point where you read the book and you say, okay, now it's time to start thinking about this idea of being more grateful, It's you then know that you're in a good point. You know that you've come a very long way. Exactly. And if, you, if you're getting into that place, now you can go out and meet somebody because you're going to be more attractive to them. Because who wants to date somebody who's negative and depressed, right, in some way? I mean, let's see. Somebody who's negative and depressed. Well, possibly, (laughs) but that may be a codependency situation. Right. But, hey, you know, again, it's whatever works. But there's a lot of science to back up that grateful people have more friends. They have better relationships. They sleep better. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to do that. In fact, there's research to indicate that if you do a gra- your gratitude journal before you go to bed, which this five-minute journal app, by the way, it, it has a nighttime, and you can do the five minutes before you go to bed. And there is research to indicate that you'll actually sleep better that night. So you could do it in the morning and the evening. That's 10 minutes a day, and you've added quite a bit of gratitude into your life. And, uh, and then you're ready to date again if you want which is chapter eight which is next time the last chapter and what's the name of the book again get the f out of my life so what you're telling me is the name of the book is get the f out of my life i'm saying that that's very good (laughs) we'll see you next week see you later